Television highlights of the news of yesteryear. Here's Great Britain's General Allenby of Near East Command in 1917, as Balfour Declaration gives renewed hope to Jews of promised land. In months that follow, with ink on Balfour Pact still wet as waves, these waves of the Mediterranean Sea, Jews pour into the wasted and sandy acres of ancient Palestine, a home of their own at last. But blossoms will bloom in desert if toil and trouble can do what nature has not done. Out of sun-dried earth the first year, here comes the meager harvest. Hotland parasites and pests will not contaminate this second laboriously planted crop. Where there was last year nothing but miles of waste, a people's gardens grow. And out of the land of sand, barren and abandoned to a burning sky, the seeds of a city bloom. The machinery of modern times is missing, but strength is not. And soon a city of 40,000 people shines in the desert sun where there was nothing but wind and sand before. And they call it Tel Aviv. <laughs> York City in May of 48, American Jewry joins the freedom-loving peoples of the world to celebrate the thrilling news. United Nations laws have established Palestine as a free and independent state to be known as Israel. And there's one bold star on a brave new flag waving among the proud banners of free nations. But bounded on all sides by hostile Arab states, Israel calls its world's newest nationals to arms, for infant Israel is threatened with brevity and the breaking of a promise that couldn't keep. With Arab invasion imminent, Haganah troops abandon underground activities to train for open war. First Arab attacks are fierce, and tribal troops make quick work of conquest in old Jerusalem. Ancient metropolis of Holy Land would not yield to ravages of time, but savage assault by attacking Arabs turns the sun-baked city into a broken, burned-out battlefield. Looting follows the Arab smash, as new home of once homeless Jews becomes a grab bag of victory, and rubbish burns in the battle-ruined streets. Proudly surveying captured Jerusalem is tribal potentate Glob Pasha, looking at ruins around him with probably eye to what the rest of infant Israel will look like when Arab troops attack again. But Jewish troops still hold their new one home. And there is promise that they'll keep what they still have as Count Folk Bernadotte of Sweden and the United Nations effects a truce. On Isle of Rhodes in 1949, Count Bernadotte is mortal angel of hope to those who wait for calm, fair and friendly end of differences in Holy Land. But assassins only wait with guns. I had a mark long before I got up. How they came and they on top and I'm a mile up. I had a mark long before I dial up. How they claim and they on top and I'm a mile up. Uh, I know the wall's closing in, but don't you dare give up now. What's going on, friends and family? It's Jackie Lukeman. And I am Uncle Baba Lukeman. And welcome to another edition of Dope Friday Date Night with the Lukemans. The most dangerous show on social media. I almost missed my cue. But the most dangerous show on social media, on the most dangerous platform of social media. We'd like to welcome all of you all for showing up 
And I know we started off a little different, mm -hmm. but we wanted to get this show started right. And um, know that wasn't Liberia, that wasn't Antarctica, that wasn't the North Pole. <laughs> that was a newsreel that was taken back in 1948 mm -hmm. um, on the... Uh, on the um, uh, the state of uh, Israel, what they consider the state of Israel, which we call Palestine, and um, we we started off with that news real because um, the subject matter of our show today is going to be the um, the media, the U.S. how the U.S. and Western media has always distorted the reality of what um, the state of Israel is, and have always distorted and misrepresented the Palestinian people and its causes. Yeah, and, and it is extremely important to understand that this media complicity in the fabrication of the narrative of Israel, um, you know, plucky little Israel, yes, infant yes, yes, little yes. Israel, oh, embattled and besieged little Israel, um, it, it the, the U.S. media has been complicit in crafting this narrative mm -hmm. from the very beginning, starting with this newsreel that we just showed you. I mean, if you noticed a couple of things, um, and we're, we're going to try to dig into them and, and kind of point out the fallacies in them. But before we do that, because we got a lot to cover tonight, yes. let's get to the housekeeping. Listen, if you uh, are just joining us here in Black Power Media uh, and Lukeman Nation, uh, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Uh, you can subscribe to Black Power Media if you have not already done it. You can join Black Power Media if you have not already done it. If you join Black Power Media, you become a member and you get access to special exclusive members only content. Um, but you can support Black Power Media by subscribing and by supporting BPM on Patreon, uh, patreon.com Black Power Media. Uh, you can also uh, support Luke My Nation on Patreon, uh, patreon.com Luke My Nation. But whatever you do, subscribe, hit the like button, join, hit the notification bell so that whenever a new video comes up, Anywhere on the channel from any one of us on the BPM team, you get a notification and you don't miss out. Okay. And, and I just wanted to say uh, that we do have people who are monitoring the chat. So again, you know, if you, I mean, you know, we're here to be, you know, we're here to seriously um, under, you know, to learn. We're here seriously to help others learn, um, um, you know, what we're talking about today. So you know, we have a no tolerance for clowns and jokers. <laughs> so if you're a clown, you're a joker. And you don't have, um, and you don't want to learn anything. You just want to just play around. This ain't the spot to do it because we're not going. We're not doing timeouts. You're just getting kicked up out of here. Yeah, this is. It. You know, normally we we can joke, we can laugh, and 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 have a good time. This is not one of those shows. This this is not one of those joking, laughing shows. So we've got to dispel some serious myths. And I love what you said. Um, and someone in the in the chat, uh, uh, actually, uh, James Thompson, uh, echoed that if you're neutral on this issue then you've already taken a side and you're not on the side we're on. So. That's right. Thanks, James, for that. Yeah. So definitely before we get started, uh, we want to shout out all of our friends and family in the chat. Neil Sanger, Marion Anderson, James Thompson, Deborah Rodriguez, Ricky Ryan. Speaking of Ricky Ryan, I interviewed Ricky Ryan on By Any Means Necessary. This Good week. interview. I, it was I, a I, great, I interview great interview on the, the shameful behavior of Marilyn Mosby, that fake progressive prosecutor in Baltimore and how she is not handling, mishandling, uh, continuing to per persecute Keith Davis Jr. Wow. in Baltimore and disrespecting uh, his family and supporters. So, uh, and that actually came out after the interview was done. Mm. So we'll, that interview was posted on uh, Black Power, uh, I'm sorry, on a By Any Means Necessary on Spreaker and iTunes and Spotify and whatever, wherever else. But I I'll drop a link for you uh, later on. Uh, also, Melinda Green. Uh, let's see who we've got. Uh, Arif Hassan, Hope, uh, Emily M, Leah Boggs, uh, Logan Medrano, Tunde Osazua. Go down. Uh, Volti M, Del Sendero. And Sh oh, Shirley, Kenan Lattimore, Shirley, uh, Jabarian M, and Sugar Booger Seven. Yeah. Welcome, y'all. Lisa Catlett, you snuck in there. You yeah, snuck you in did, there, right? Lisa. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, and uh, to David Silver, no, Dave, we're not trying to uh, stop anybody 
from being who they are, man. So it's not, you know, you don't have to stop with your puns or nothing. We talking about, and y'all know these people, man, they come in here and, you know, they don't support us really. And they just come in here to try to just turn, tear the house down. And so we're talking about folks like them and y'all, y'all recognize it. Y'all have seen mm-hmm. it before. So, yeah. So Dave, do be you, man. Do mm-hmm. what you do. Yep. So, all right, let's, let's get to this news reel that yes. we shared very quickly. Um, first of all, the very first lie in the news reel, and, and that, that is just a piece of U.S. Uh, imperialist propaganda that news Well, before reel. we get into that, you want to, mm-hmm. um, uh, we do got some news. Do we? Yeah. Okay. What, what, what news have we? Huh? Well, I mean, we did go to the French embassy, right? Yes, we did. And, we did go to the French I embassy. I mean, you know, and not everybody watched the morning show. That's so. true. That's true. So we, we did. Okay. Thank you. for Yeah. We did try yeah. to, um, we did cover a protest of the uh, uh, Chadian diaspora at the French embassy last Friday. And we tried to play this clip uh, of the protest um, uh, Tuesday yes. in, in the morning show, but we had technical difficulties and it just wouldn't play. So we wanted to make sure that you saw this. Uh, because this is the kind of work we do in general all the time. It was what we were doing before we were a part of Black Power Media, and it's what we will continue to do um, as we're with Black Power Media and beyond. So this is uh, uh, a reflection of the kind of activism and work uh, and the kind of people we rock with uh, who are serious about their liberation since we are talking about liberation i think it does i think it does uh it falls right hand falls in, hand. in quite nicely hand in hand so here we go hey everybody i'm jackie lupon i am here with the nation as you can see uh we're in front of the french embassy we are here in front of the French Embassy in Washington, D.C. Uh, we're here uh, because there is a group of uh, Chadians and residents of the Chadian diaspora here in the United States who are protesting the French Embassy in front of the French Embassy because of France's continued involvement in the never-ending conflict in the country of the Chad. Uh, so there is a group of uh, uh, Chadians and, and diaspora residents uh, across the street here. They have erected a makeshift coffin uh, here, as you can see, uh, in front of the embassy. And I'm not sure if you can see the sign that the lady is holding there that what she's pointing out, neocolonialism equals slavery and oppression, and it is neocolonialism of the French government in Chad that uh, these people are out here protesting today. Yeah, they put a, a, a dictator in the, in the country, in Chad, and then we say no. Enough is enough. They gotta get out to the country. France now, they try, like, you know, the, the fact that he passed away, so what's happening with the fight for our emancipation is similar to our African American brothers and sisters in this uh, white supremacist nation. White people should be grateful Africans, black people have laid the foundation to everything, civilization, artistic endeavors, sciences. We are behind all of everything that people are enjoying today, but as a thank you, they spit on us, they kill us, they put us as slaves, and in 2021, they continue to exploit us. The situation in Chad is going to be key when it comes to the global emancipation of black people. We want our fellow black people. I want you to know you are an African who is in America. We have Africans in the Caribbean from Haiti, from Jamaica, from all over the world. We want Africans, the most powerful group of Africans in America, to help people of Chad. When it comes to your legislators, email your legislators, your senators, your legislators. 
your representative in the text of the Republic of China. Because, because you are taxpayers, your money that you know it goes to your dependents in terms of aid. Tell them you are not okay. You are not okay with my tax money going to China. You are not okay with your money going to Africa because those leaders take the money and put it in private accounts, offshore accounts, and nothing is yours for the betterment of the lives of Africans in Africa. And that's a fact. I want U.S. citizens to eat their text Congress every day. We don't want that tax into AIDS because we heard from Africans themselves that money is not used for what we are supposed to be used for. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, to thank you for uh, coming to cover this event. And uh, this is a fight against uh, new colonialism. This is a fight against black people. This is a fight about freedom. This is a fight about uh, equality. For 30 years, for 30 years, the people of Chad have suffered from one of the most brutal dictatorships in Africa and around the world. But you know who is behind? France. They support the father for over 30 years. And on April the 20th, when he passed away, the people of Chad hoped for political change. But this didn't happen. The empire, the French empire, is still behind. Macron, the assassin, the criminal, went to Chad. Actually, he was only the only Western head of state to come to Chad mm. to basically validate the military against the will of Chad, Chad and against our constitution. We are fed up. We are fed up. That's why we are here. We are here to tell them that the time for uh, monarchical succession of power in Africa is over. The people are up. The people are are, are are together as one man. And we're not we're gonna fight this fight. We're gonna win against the force of evil. The good will always That's fight. Right. That's right. So what what I was uh, saying in in the in the in the clip where the uh, the audio was I was saying that if I had an American flag I'd throw that on the ground and I'd be yeah. stomping on that too uh, but I didn't so you know uh, but yeah we we are, are very happy to have been able to bring the voices of the Chadian people to you so they can tell you what the struggle is. I mean, we didn't say anything to those people about no, why not. should we Africans in this country be out here uh, in solidarity. No, they made those connections clear themselves. Yep. So, and one of the reasons why that that we um, um, and one of the things that was important for us to show you that video is because in the age of social media, um, one of one of the um, I guess um, problems with social media when it comes to news is that you know news and events go so quickly. So here we focus on Chad, and then now come the Palestinians, then come this and come that. And so what we try to do is like, look, we're not going to do like other medias um, have done and say, well, okay, you don't hear about the, you know, that that was old news. Right. You know, no, those people are still struggling. Those people are still fighting. France is still doing what it does, um, uh, um, involved internally in the politics and stuff in Chad. Um, so, you know, so these things are still relevant. So this is the reason why we constantly keep these stories um, in, in, in front of our consciousness. Yes. And and yes, uh, uh, Bosco 777. Yes, we do have incense going, as we actually usually do. Yeah. Uh, Baba uh, usually does uh, mm. set the mood and invites the ancestors in and, and uh, you know, gets gets the atmosphere right We're so that we, because <laughs> we, we are going to need it in this struggle. So we do. It, it, was a, it was a good thing to start with that that clip of propaganda from yeah. uh, uh, from the United States about mm -hmm. Palestine and and Israel 
and and transition to the struggles of Chadians against another colonial power, mm -hmm. uh, France, to this very day, because this whole this whole struggle, whether it's in Chad, whether it's in Palestine, whether it's in Mali, whether it whether it's here. Mm. And, it, and just it, just to just to um, you know, because look, my nation, we love to give these historical things out. Yes. And just 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 briefly mm -hmm. is that it was the French who gave Israel its nuclear weapons. Come on now. It was the French. So it was the French that gave Israel <clears throat> its nuclear weapons mm -hmm. and its nuclear technology. And so you see France all in right. these things, you know what I mean? Right. Even as Israel supported apartheid South Africa. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, because France, when when apartheid, apartheid South Africa um, uh, crumbled mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Nelson Mandela became president, then... France bought their nukes back. Well, no. Well, what, well, happened, what happened? It to... was um, uh, South Africa was um, had like eight nuclear weapons mm -hmm. at the time of the end of the the white apartheid government, and so when they knew that you know that blacks was going to take over, the last thing whites wanted um, was for black people to be able to have nuclear weapons. So Tony <laughs> Blair, um, Tony Blair came up with the idea of let's buy before Nelson Mandela and the blacks get in there. Let's take South Africa nukes. So Tony Blair in England bought, I think, six nukes, nuclear mm -hmm. um, uh, missiles. The United States bought two of them. Mm -hmm. And so the lead, and not only did they, they um, did the United, did Britain and the United States buy up the, the existing nuclear weapons at the time, they also um, uh, de de um, dismantled mm -hmm. um, South Africa's um, uh, nuclear facility so they can't, couldn't enrich any uranium and all this stuff. And they also... Um, left um, with the, the apartheid government also left um, by raiding the treasury. You hear all the time, and I know this is not about South Africa. We'll talk about that later date. But you know, the, you always hear this criticism again with the media mm -hmm. saying, uh, "Look, South Africa was a, a prosperous uh, nation when white folks had it, <laughs> and now that the blacks have it, look at look at this and look at that. They couldn't do this; they couldn't do that. But what they don't mention is that the apartheid government um, and, and those um, uh, wealthy whites." Um, they basically drained the treasury before blacks took over. Yeah, they kept it. the money. They kept the money. They kept yeah. the money. So, so, so yes, that that you never heard. Right. That you know, and only independent journalism, which is why it's so important to support independent journalism, because we would have not known that it was for a place like Democracy Now and other independent journalists <laughs> yeah. who went down uh, um, beneath the surface to find the truth of these things, so that the rest of us know it. You won't get it from CNN. You won't get it from. MSNBC, you won't get this. Of course, you know you ain't gonna get it from Fox. <laughs> you know, Fox loved the narrative that black people screwed up South Africa. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so this and this is um where um, BPM. This is where we're endeavoring to go one day. This is just the beginning. So anyway, back to our regular scheduled program. Yes. So so France sold Israel nuclear. They weapons. they didn't sell them anything. They, they gave them because you gotta understand Oh, it was something. like a present. Thing. Right. Well you gotta understand something. Europe was <laughs> Europe was under the guilt trip of the Holocaust. Ah, oh, I see. So 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 you know so I see what right, you're right. It was under the guilt trip of the Holocaust. And so it wasn't that Israel ain't buying nothing. They they gave Israel because they already knew what the plan for Israel was to be the outpost for settler white settler colonialism. Mm -hmm. And so you know so Europe, you know, under the guise of oh wow, you know, we did bad by um, not supporting the Jews when um, uh, under you know this Holocaust and anti-Semitic thing, so we're just going to build them up. That's the that's the line they told us. In actuality, they knew that um, Israel was going to be that fortress, that settler colonialist white fortress out there. Um, I mean, look, uh, the Gypsies were also um, uh, the Rome, Rome, the um, the Romanis. I think mm -hmm. I don't like calling them Gypsies. The Romani they uh, also suffered. Yep. Under the Holocaust, it was millions of them that were murdered. Did you didn't put them in the middle of a, 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 a you didn't give them Palestine mm. and, and, or any land, and and um, and I guarantee you um, that had their they, they would have put the Romani somewhere um, because they were just as much, if not even more, hated in Israel. Mm. I mean, um, in Europe mm -hmm. than the than the European Jews were. So you know, wow. so they weren't wanted anywhere. So wow. so if the Romani were put somewhere. I guarantee you France would have been giving them no nuclear weapons. Oh, they, wow. It would have been the same thing that they did when apartheid, so-called apartheid ended. And um, they were like, oh, no, you blacks can't have nuclear weapons because as white folks, we have to be, we have to, the the, the balance of power have to be us here and y'all down here. Mm. We cannot mm -hmm. give you any kind of um, of um, uh, 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 ability That's you right. know, to, to 
equal playing field. And see, this is all this is all connected. The the connections between France and 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 South Africa and Israel and Mali and Chad and it's all connected. And mm. we're gonna we're gonna show you why. Let me show you why. We're, we're gonna be doing this a lot, uh, sharing screens with you because there's so there is so much information about Israel. Uh, the creation of Israel and the the oppression and occupation and near genocide of palace of the Palestinian people that it doesn't do the conversation I feel like right it doesn't do the conversation a service to just sit here and talk about it I would rather show you the information so nobody's gonna sit there and say well the Lukman say no the Lukmans didn't say anything the Lukman showed you right. what so this is why all of this what you just said mm -hmm. everything we talked about about you know, all these seemingly disconnected, you know, Chad right, and Mali right, and right. France and South Africa. No, they're actually all connected. And let me just uh, see if I can share uh, my little screen here. Remember we talked last uh, week about... Nope, not that one. It's a wrong screen. We talked last week about um, Theodore Herzl yes. being the father of Zionism. And there's the, always this argument that, you know, Zionism is this religious thing and it's, you know, it's an expression of Judaism, blah, blah, blah. Okay. No, it's not. And Theodore Herzl never claimed it was an expression of Judaism. As a matter of fact, Theodore Herzl knew that Zionism is an expression of colonialism. Not making it up. Right here. This is a passage from a book. I'm going to tell you what the book is in a minute. But this passage is very important. Herzl, Theodore Herzl, approached Britain because he said it was the first to recognize the need for colonial expansion. According to him, the idea of Zionism which is a colonial idea, this is what Herzl said, should be easily and quickly understood in England. So in 1902, Theodore Herzl approached Cecil Rhodes. Who was Cecil Rhodes? Cecil Rhodes was that guy who they named uh, Rhodesia out of, um, named the country Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. Uh -huh. But yeah, he was a big, big ass colonizer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Herzl approached Cecil Rhodes, who had recently colonized the territory of the Shona people as Rhodesia. You are being invited to help make history. Theodore Herzl said in a letter to Cecil Rhodes, it doesn't involve Africa, but a piece of Asia Minor, not Englishmen, but Jews. How then do I happen to turn to you since this is an out of the way matter for you? How indeed? Because it is something colonial. That is uh, an excerpt from this book. Choo, choo, choo. That I, I need you to grab if you can. Where are you? There you are. The Case for Palestine, mm. an International Law Perspective. This is why reading is important in the struggle. And, 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 and some of the stuff that we are telling you tonight, we're just learning some of this stuff ourselves. Yeah, yeah. We ain't, gonna, look, we ain't fronting that. We're not we're fronting like we sat here. We knew all this nah, stuff. Oh, no. Nah, we learned a lot as we go along. We do the research and we, we stumble upon stuff that we didn't know. We're like, what? So we we this just was further, something with, with that just, I didn't know. Well, at least to me, it's like that's why knowledge is so important. Because it further radicalizes you. Like like when, oh, I, when, when we started researching this stuff, it was like, oh, wow, now I'm even more pissed off. I, I even exactly. more, I want to do even more now, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's like, and, and, that, and, and that's what knowledge and, and information is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I think like James said earlier, like, look, if you're neutral, then you already chose the side. Then you've already chosen yeah. the side. Yeah, so I mean, I, and that, that is so true. Mm -hmm. So when we, so when we, so now that we know that the father of Zionism always intended uh, Zionism to be a colonial project. Mm. And he understood what colonization was and what it did to people because he went to the colonizer. He went to Cecil Rhodes. Right, right, right. So he understood what Cecil Rhodes did in 
Zimbabwe, what is now Zimbabwe, what was then Shona territory. And, and he went to him anyway, asking him for advice. How do we do this? So Theodore Herzl had no intentions of ever, ever, ever sharing any land that was bequeathed to him by Britain. Right, right. So this, this is the Balfour Declaration was being talked about. So Britain was already involved in this even before Herzl died. Mm -hmm. So Palestine had become uh, a possibility, but, but it, wasn't, it wasn't absolutely decided upon then. So think about this. We talked about last week. Um, Uganda was a possible uh, a location. Argentina was a possible location. So this meant that wherever the Zionists went, mm -hmm. They were going to do the same thing there that they eventually did in Palestine. But I, I think one thing needs to be clear, too. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about Britain and Balfour Declaration and all this other kind of stuff, Britain um, and, and uh, uh, they, you know, the, the, they didn't do this because, you know, of, of any kind of humanitarian sentiments towards the Jewish people. Um, just like when we talked about how the political Zionists went to the Nazis too. Mm. They also went to um, other uh, bastions of, um, of rabid anti-Semitism in Europe and stuff and said to them too, hey, you want to give it to your Jew problem? <laughs> you right. know, hey, help us yep. out here. You know, mm -hmm. so, so, you know, so it wasn't um, that, you know, uh, they had this, you know, this sentiment of doing right um, in a humanitarian sense. What it was, was Europe has always been anti-Semitic. So, right. so, you know, so they were looking at getting rid of the you got to remember that um, uh, that even um, in this country, and I don't want to get too far off point, but even in this country, um, the United States, the founding fathers, there's writing from Thomas Jefferson and others who said they didn't want Jews in the United States. Yes, that's right. Because the first thing they said was they're going to take over the banking. You've seen the same type of anti-Jewish um, uh, 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 rhetoric that you would wind up hearing uh, um, from, from the Nazis and mm -hmm. wind up hearing throughout history. That was being repeated by people like Thomas Jefferson and them to the point where we're like, no, we don't want a bank because the Jews are going to take it over. We do not want Jews coming to America. This was a, um, this 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 was the, the sentiment of Jefferson. It was the sentiment of a lot of these so-called founding fathers. So I mean, so this 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 was rooted in Europe. Right. So so when they when when Herzl and them came, and Herzl knew this. So when Herzl right. and the political Zionists came and and planted this, they felt like well. Yeah, it's good for us to use the anti-Semitism of the European government to help us in this mission. Because mm -hmm. they don't want us around anyway. Exactly, exactly. So Ricky has a great question. She said, Baba, last week you broke down the different types of Zionism, which was fabulous. Uh, another one of those things that I learned while we were doing this research. How can progressive Zionists get away with this actual history of Israel being a colonial project? I mean, it's because... That's, that's a good question. I mean, uh, we talked about last week about how the progressive Zionists were really against the political Zionism. Mm. Remember we said it was said there were several different forms of Zionism. Mm -hmm. The progressive Zionists were the ones who were really like, okay, yeah, you know, we need a homeland. We would love to have a homeland, but not at the expense of other people. Right. You know, not, not, we don't want to, to establish a homeland based on a settler colonial model. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so they, you know, they looked at it as being progressive and, and even within the progressive Zionist um, camp, you had different um, uh, um, sentiments there too. You had some progressive Zionists who said, "Okay, well, since we're there, um, we need to, we, you know, we need to um, be truly democratic when it mm -hmm. comes to the Palestinians. You know, we can't kick them out the land, all stuff." But what happened? And um, Ricky and I don't know when that changed. I would love. I'm, I'm, I should. I'm going to research it. When did the shift change with the progressive Zionist movements? Like we talked about about the organization in Canada and, mm -hmm. and some in the United States. How is it now that the shift now is that they supported the political Zionists yeah. and they supported the settlers and everything else? So that, to me, is something that I think needs to be looked into. Yeah. You know, where, where the money come from? Because when we see those type mm. of ideological changes, mm. there's somebody Always. with a big checkbook that came around and um, said, hey, look, you know, um, this pays more. That, exactly. That's a, a, <laughs> yet, yet even more for us to learn. We appreciate y'all giving us more reasons to learn more things. So. Okay, let, let's, so now you've got the basis yeah. of what Zionism always was intended to be, mm -hmm. right? So let's go back to that newsreel that we opened up with and the absolute lies, just flat out lies in that newsreel. Now, the whole thing is 12 minutes long. Mm -hmm. We just showed you the first 
four minutes or so of the newsreel. And from the beginning, the United States prop propaganda machine lied about Israel. Yes, they did. Or Israel, Palestine. well, yeah, well, they, they lied about the creation right, of Israel because yes, you know they talk about oh the establishment of Israel, nineteen seventy. Israel didn't exist. Mm. It didn't exist. It didn't exist in nineteen seventeen. So I don't that just the the title of the thing was just ridiculous. From nineteen seventeen to nineteen fifty. Yeah, just just ridiculous. Um, they made a big show of showing all this barren land and talking about it was a desert and there was nothing there before these plucky refugees from Nazi from the Nazi Holocaust came. That's a lie. That's an absolute lie. And they actually now those people we saw mm -hmm. that were doing the digging and stuff. Remember, we go back to our lesson last week. Mm -hmm. They were the labor zionists. Right, that's right. right. They were the labor zionists. They were the who... ones that was brought here to do the work. Right, but there were right. people in Palestine before of they course. showed up. Yeah. But see, there's been Including this Jews. Uh, yeah. But see, there has been this narrative that this newsreel tries to reflect. That there was nothing in this region. There was no one there. There was no infrastructure. No civilization. Practically, wasn't it Golda Meir who said that uh, that 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 uh, um, Israel is a land for people uh, uh, and a people with no land or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was, or, a, uh, it was a, a land without people and people right, without land. That's what. It, yeah, I mean, suggesting well, not suggesting, absolutely saying that there was nobody in Palestine before. The Jews who were refugees from not from the Nazi Holocaust came. Well, if that was true, then why does the newsreel say toward the end, uh, this you know plucky new young country uh, pa called Palestine that will now be called Israel? So, so if you look at and if you listen to the propaganda close enough. They will tell on themselves, even as they perpetrate these lies. Of course. How yeah. many times have we heard from modern media and, and, and a lot of Zionists, whether they be, uh, you know, Jews or just people who are sympathetic to the Jews, that Palestine actually did not exist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they say they say that Palestine. They First of all, the, the narrative um, that, that um, the um, political Zionists adopted you know, because they really didn't care about the religious aspect of it, they they actually co-opted the religious um, Zionism part in order to further their cause. But the thing of is that Palestine actually was after the um, the banishment of the so-called original uh, Jews from the land. Um, you know, the the banishment of the Babylonian exile and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Then the Philistines, because we got to understand that you know the Palestinians is is considered to be the descendants of the Philistine people right. that was mm -hmm. there. Um, uh, and, and so, um, uh, you know, so yeah, so they just, they actually just took over when we were exiled. That was the thing. Um, you know, and, um, and so now we're back, you know, <laughs> right. and so now they got it. And, and this, this is the narrative that not only the political Zionists and, and the, you know, the, as you see the settlers now and mm -hmm. stuff, but this is the, but from, as you see from the newsreel, this has been the accepted narrative that the Western media um, and, and it's mighty funny because that that's the narrative that the Western media has supported and mm -hmm. they still support that to this day. Yep, they do. I mean, there, there are different variations on those you know, on that lie that there's no such thing as the Palestinian people. Right. I've heard that. I've heard people say that Palestinians were made up by. Um, Oh, I, Pat the, Robinson's thing. Pat Robinson said that. Yeah, that that they were made they up were made by up whoever people. the you yeah. know the the last uh, 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 head of the PLO. I think it was. I can't remember his name. Yasser Arafat. You're right, 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 right. Um, yeah, that Yasser Yasser Arafat just crafted a whole bunch of people out of their heads. I think Golda Meir. Somebody pointed out in in the chat that Golda Meir also said that there's no such thing as the Palestinian yeah. people. Yeah. But again. If you look at this piece of propaganda that we just showed you, if these people, if this place didn't exist before uh, uh, Israel, then why are they calling it Palestine in their own little piece of propaganda? Well, Big Till said it, and um, and I agree, is that it's 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 out right out of the settler colonialist handbook. We've said we've heard the same thing from the um, invaders of the Americas. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I don't remember. I can tell you how many times I I've, I've heard. Uh, you know, being a long distance truck driver, you know, mm -hmm. and, and being in parts of this country 
where you would hear white guys talk about, well, you know, the Indians wasn't doing nothing with the land. So, right. you know, so, you know, we, mm-hmm. so, you know, they wasn't doing nothing with it. They were just sitting around smoking peace pipes and, you know, and so, you know, we, we, we turned this land into something. And mm-hmm. so it is, and I, and, and Big Till is right. It is a narrative. They did it with, in Africa. Um, you know, when they um, enslaved our ancestors, it was like, well, they're suited to be slaves because they're not um, as they, you know, they're, they're, they're not a people. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're some sort. And then they use these, this made up pseudoscience and anything to justify because it's not natural for human beings, believe it or not, to do the atrocities that these Europeans have done. So yeah. they needed a whole support network the Papa Bulls and all this. Mm-hmm. Other. They needed all of this justification to do this type of savagery. Mm-hmm. And so their institutions and stuff that they set up, all of this stuff from the religious to the educational systems to all of these other systems to support their atrocities and their brutality to people all over the world. You know, so, um, so, so of course, we're going to hear the same old narratives mm-hmm. that, that the Palestinians um, uh, have been um, slandered by. Our ancestors have been slandered by the Aboriginal people of Australia. Yeah. No matter yep. where mm-hmm. these Europeans have went, they took that handbook as, as Big Till was um, referencing. They took that handbook wherever they went, wherever they and went. was like, "We're justified to take this because boom, you know what I mean?" And they just, <laughs> they, you know, and if it, and, the, and if it wasn't something in there, they'll just make it up. Exactly. That that that's what they do. So so okay, there's that piece yeah. that it, that is very important, but. But now there's this piece because you know now we're talking about settler colonialism, right? And 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 we've established that Theodore Herzl, the father of Zionism, meant for Zionism to be a settler colonial project from the beginning. After he died, everybody they knew it. So you have this narrative uh, about Israel, the the establishment of Israel that that is absolutely not true. And the media in the U.S. you see from the newsreel has been in on this. They've been in on this lie from the beginning. However, I will give credit to one American journalist. Who's that? Mike Wallace. Okay. Mike Wallace. I remember this because, and 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 I cannot find this news footage today. Doesn't surprise me. And I, so Mike Wallace back in 1990. 1990, I think it was, did a special on CBS about a massacre of 17 Palestinians uh, that no other news outlet was calling a massacre. Mm. They were all saying that these Palestinians attacked worshipers at the at the uh, Wailing Wall. Um, and Mike Wallace, who, by the way, was a Jew. Yeah, he was Jew. If you didn't know, Mike Wallace was a... a uh, a, a very rena- a well-renowned journalist with CBS News, uh, very well respected. But when he did this story, um, he uh, the entire media apparatus in this country and around the world basically turned on him. And I found I, I was looking for the footage, but I couldn't find it. So I, I had to find uh, I had to settle for this article that I think very very um what do i want to call it it encapsulates the way the media represents um israel coverage today Mm -hmm. so mike wallace on cbs news did news did this expose where he showed with footage from the temple mount um, this was in October 1990. It was in 1990. Uh, he showed this footage from the Temple Mount that the official narrative of Palestinians throwing huge boulders over the wall and injuring right. uh, worshipers, as Benjamin Netanyahu at the time, he was on television holding up a big old nah, boulder, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, right? Look at what they've done. <laughs> That's what he- yeah, because Hamas, because Hamas, yeah. and the several, several uh, Israelis, several are in the hospital. This is what they've done. So we had to fire on them. Well, Mike Wallace uh, does this expose where he disproves this from actual footage from from the the area. Um, and Wallace 
if you if you look here, I've highlighted it. The immediate version of the bloody incident, as proclaimed by the Israeli government and accepted by almost all major media, was that the police had gunned down the Palestinians only after the Palestinians, egged on by their imams, began heaving rocks at Jews praying at the Western Wall, which lay be below the confines of the Temple Mount. An outraged Benjamin Netanyahu, then Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, appeared at a dramatic press conference exhibiting a huge lethal looking boulder in his hands. Reportedly, several Jews had been hospitalized. That's what he said. Now, let me ask you a question. So when was when did this take place, allegedly? I mean, what was it, in the 90s, right? Yes, this was and not 1990. And, and here it is 2021, and Netanyahu's still around. He's still so around. So it shows you how long these people have been mm -hmm. in and out and involved in all of these things. And then you wonder why things just get worse and worse and worse. Yep, that's right. So right here... It says, as the 60 Minutes piece showed, using footage actually shot at the time, the Palestinian charges were accurate. There were no Jews praying at the wall when the rocks started sailing over. Young Palestinians, in fact, were targeting Israeli police who had begun firing tear gas and bullets at them without provocation. By that time, all the Jews who had been praying at the wall left the area. But this is where I think it's important for us to understand how and why the, the U.S. media responds the way it does mm -hmm. to any criticism of Israel, mm -hmm. because I think it really started with Mike Wallace. Wallace and his 60 Minutes crew were denounced by just about every Jewish organization in the country and faced vitriolic outbursts from leading Israeli officials. They were white. They they were accused of whitewashing a plot by the Palestinian Liberation Organization. They were accused of lying. They were accused of misrepresentation. They were doing the work of anti-Semites. And of course, they were self-hating Jews. Mike Wallace and his crew member were Jews. This is a great uh, article. Uh, but this is the other important point. This is something that, and you don't hear people talk about this. No, of course not. When mm -hmm. they talk about Mike Wallace. But no. this is incredibly important. You'll find plenty of Mike Wallace stuff when it comes to black people. Oh, lots. Yep. Lots. I found the interview that he did, you know, Mike Wallace, Mike Wallace talks about race. But okay. So several months later, in July of 1991, an independent government commission headed by Israeli judge Ezra Kama concluded that, indeed, the Palestinian deaths were the result of not a nefarious PLO plot, but rather of an Israeli police riot. They massacred those 17 people. Mike Wallace proved it on 60 Minutes, mm -hmm. but he he remained pilloried by not just the Jewish community, but also the American media establishment. Right. So this, I think, is a, is a great example of the way U.S. media, and I'm going to drop the link to the article there for you, the way the U.S. media continues in the modern modern age and how they will go after journalists mm -hmm. who dare to challenge the narrative that Israel is the victim mm -hmm. and that Palestinians are the aggressors. Right, right. Well, one of the things that we have to, um, one of the things to add to that, um, and you know, we're not here to um, uh, big up Mike Mike Wallace, okay? So he did something right. Right, he did yeah, one thing yeah, right. I'll give him that thing, much. Yeah, he did one thing right. But um, now I sound like Kalanji now. We're not here to just bring up Mike Wallace because you know because he's done some one thing right, you know. But anyway, my inner, my inner Kalanji. So and, uh, so anyway, this is it. Um, but one of the things that we that we must add to this is that the um uh that from that newsreel that we saw earlier, along to the other pro-Israel um uh, uh propaganda in U.S. media, mm -hmm. there was another component that. Uh, facilitated that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you know, you always hear it, and it's and it's not a stereotype when you hear people say, you know, Jews in the media, mm -hmm. Jews in Hollywood, and mm -hmm. you know, why the Jews run to to you know control the media, and, and people say, oh, well, that's anti-Semitic. Um, no, it's not, and I'm gonna tell you why. It was a lot of Jewish people purposely went into the media to control the narratives because of what the media in Germany had done to them. Ah. So mm -hmm. they learned their lesson from Nazi Germany. They learned their lessons from the not from 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 the Goebbels media that that um, uh, where the where the film industry 
and the news in the news industry in Nazi Germany demonized the Jews so much that it led to the Holocaust. Mm. And not only did it lead to the Holocaust, a lot of it also facil- for, um, um, uh, facilitated uh, uh, or, or hardened anti-Semitism. When we talk about the St. Louis, the ship to St. Louis, right. that was not allowed um, uh, in the United States. The United States refused the Jewish refugees on St. Louis. And the Canada did, and Cuba mm-hmm, did, mm-hmm. and um, and the fact that when three hundred, well, thirty thousand um, uh, Jews was trying to escape um, uh, uh, Nazi Germany um, before the the you know before the the, the serious pogroms started happening, mm-hmm. the United States re- rejected most of them when it came to giving them visas. So you mm-hmm. know, so he, so here it is, you know, um, um, and and Dr. John Henry Clark said this um, that I love. That that um, Britain and the United States, um, uh, the West, they did not have a problem with what Hitler was doing to the Jews. They only the the problem with Hitler came when he turned their guns on them. That's true. Because mm-hmm. you want to talk about pre uh, um, Israeli um, media, there was um, uh, I think is um, uh, who's the guy um, Winston um, uh, anyway Winchell Winchell. Oh, Walter Winchell. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it's Walter Winchell, but uh, but during the, the Olympics, it might not have been Walter Winchell, but I think it was him. But during the, the Olympics that was held in Berlin, mm-hmm. American media praised Nazi Germany, even though wow. they knew about the anti-Semitism mm. that was going on. They praised it. Some American journalists were talking about this is the ideal society, you know, and, and the Nazis did a lot. Uh, uh, um, um, you know, they, they did a lot to present that image to the point where they kind of suspended their their um, anti-Semitism mm-hmm. while the world stage was looking at them for the Olympics. Mm-hmm. But I mean, but they but Nazi Germany and Hitler was reported favorably in the American press. In fact, Time magazine, I think, um, uh, was considering putting Hitler as man of the year. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, so these are so 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 you see, and this was even before the state of Israel. So you had a lot of of, of Jewish in, intelligentsia and stuff. That realized that hey look if we're going to prevent this from happening again we there's certain aspects of society that we need to be represented in and one of that is how information is distributed about us wow see that that is a much better i think breakdown of that that you know jews control the media thing than just saying well jews, jews control the media and make it like some conspiratorial yeah, right, no right, it's right, right. it is historically in response to a horrific historical event. Mm-hmm. But here is oh, the problem. Thanks, Neil. What he was, was man of the year in 1938. I didn't oh. want to commit to that, but I knew I didn't want to commit to that without being sure. But wow. thanks, Neil, for that. He was man of the year in 1938. I did not know that. Yep. See, there's another thing I didn't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just uh, just wild. Okay, so 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 here so here we have Jews have been, they've, they've escaped, the, the survivors have escaped the Nazi Holocaust. You know, they're, they're refugees from Europe. Right. Um, and, and Britain, which had no right to give Palestine to anybody else. Right. They decide, well, look, you know, we're, 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 we've done everything we're going to do with the Balfour doc- de- Declaration. And you look, y'all do what y'all going to do. So how did, beyond the Balfour Declaration, this is another piece of this that we don't learn in the U.S. media. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I had to look into because I was looking at um, the the, uh, uh, connections between settler colonialism in Palestine and settler colonialism in Africa. Mm -hmm. And I came across this essay by Brother Malik, uh, El Haj Malik, El Shabazz, Malcolm X. Uh, let me find it. So, because we've been talking quite a bit about uh, on on by any means necessary mm-hmm. about you know solidarity between Palestinians and 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 Africans and Africa African uh, Americans. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking this up. Right, especially for Malcolm X's birthday for the nineteenth, and I was thinking of a monologue. I'm like, what the heck am I going to write? This thing is going on in Palestine, mm. and what? So I'm just, and I came across. I, I this came up in the Google search. I'd never heard of this before, wow. and I didn't know anything about it. Malcolm wrote a, an an essay, a treatise, that was published in the Egyptian Gazette. 
The Egyptian Gazette is the oldest English language newspaper in Asia Minor, or otherwise known as the Middle East. Or Africa. Uh, yeah, I'm going to work on stop call, <laughs> not calling it the Middle East right. anymore. But anyway, he wrote this in 1964. Mm. Now, this there are things, I'm going to give you the link to this. I cannot go into everything that is in here because it is if you didn't know that it was written by Malcolm X and it was written in 1964, you would have thought that someone wrote it yesterday. It's that prescient. But he says something in this essay that caused me to go research something else. Let me scroll down. Let me. I hope I highlighted it. Yep, there, there we go. go. He says under under Messiah, and he's he's talking about the lack of logic that that Zionists have mm -hmm. in trying to you know defend their position. And he says, you know, if the religious claim of Zionists is true that they were to be led to the promised land by their Messiah, and Israel's present occupation of Arab Palestine is the fulfillment of that prophecy, where is their Messiah whom their prophets said would get the credit for leading them there? Then he wrote this. It was Ralph Bunch who negotiated the Zionist into possession of occupied Palestine. Is Ralph Bunch the Messiah of Zionism? Mm -hmm. If Ralph Bunch is not their Messiah and their Messiah has not yet come, then what are they doing in Palestine ahead of their Messiah? Which is the which is <laughs> the um, uh, uh, argument that. Um, uh, 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 Jewish groups like Natori, uh, um, Natori Qatari mm -hmm. that we had on our Palestinian... Right, the anti-Zionist right, Jews. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Well, that's, that's their argument. So I had to look that up because I did not know what Ralph Bunch had to do with any of this. And I found out that Ralph Bunch actually had quite a bit to do with the establishment of the State of Israel, unfortunately. So, or, so, so who was Ralph? Because you know we can't assume everybody know who he was or what, okay. what in what context he was. That's operating true. Here. That's true. Let me uh, uh, let me make sure I'm pulling up the right article. Where there it is. Okay. So, Ralph Bunch. Let me go all the way to the top. Ralph Bunch uh, was the UN mediator in the Middle East, and he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1950 for mediating the truce mm. in the Israeli-Arab War of 1948. That was the first one. The, that was, that, was that the first? Yeah. Uh, okay, right. So, and I, when I was reading it, I was like, I hope you're not talking about Ralph Bunch, Ralph Bunch, right? Like the black guy, Ralph Bunch, but he was. So th this is another one of those long articles. But it, it is. I think it is important that we we scroll but, down. Yeah, but there is a, a few highlights. Yeah. Um. Um. You know, in this, and, and I had um, wrote some of them down. Oh, good. You good. know, so um, basically, what it was is that um, the Arabs invaded Israel mm -hmm. um, after the um, Zionist um, settlers were killing Jews. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, it, killing, killing Palestinians, Palestinians, where they were ethnically cleansing Arab villages. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ones that, that, that you always hear about that um, is Dar Yassin oh, yeah. and, and others, um, and, and how Jewish militants killed um, the Swedish, um, uh, 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 I forget his name, he was in the newsreel. Mm -hmm. um, but how the Jewish militants killed him when he was trying to bring peace to the region. Um, and so Ralph Bunch negotiated when the Arab uh, armies invaded to protect the, um, uh, uh, protect, uh, the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, uh, the negotiation came. But what was wrong with the negotiations is the Arab criticism of the negotiation is that Ralph Bunch um, uh, negotiated where the Zionists um, were allowed to keep 78% of the occupied lands mm -hmm. that they that they gained off of their conflicts with with the with the Arabs. Also, um, he didn't try hard enough, according to the Arabs, to um, to have a guarantee of of the repatriation of Palestinian refugees, mm -hmm. which are still um, which Israel basically just locked out, right. and then they you know they don't have a right to return according to mm -hmm. the Israeli state today. And so this Palestinian refugee problem started then, mm -hmm. and Ralph Bunch, according to um, um, uh, his Arab um, uh, um, the, to the Arabs that 
he he had the leverage to do that, mm -hmm. but but he was so he was more interested in stopping the hot war between right. the Arabs and Israelis. And I guess like always, it was like, well, we'll get to that later. But they they here it is seventy years, you know, something. Right. Bigger. Also, um, the fact that Ralph Bunch oversaw the division of Jerusalem. Right. And that was a big right. thing too, you know. Right. So so these are the things that um uh, that we see today. Uh, um, that that ha has its roots mm -hmm. in that first Arab Israeli war where um, Ralph Bunch, unfortunately a black man, and this goes back to because now we have uh, Linda Thomas Green yeah. Greenfield, uh. who's a black woman now who's the United States ambassador to the United Nations, who in 2021 now is um, uh, blocking, uh, um, uh, um, you know, as a, as a Security Council member, mm -hmm. um, you know the. Um, coalition of states to condemn Israel right. for its actions. So you and I saw that as being, um, a, a, you and I saw that, and we talked about this before the show, of the black misleadership class yeah. being used mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. white supremacy, mm -hmm. settler colonialist mm -hmm. nations, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, uh, and, and it's a shame because you have these black faces on, if I'm a Palestinian and I'm really into the history of this, and I see, well, dang, Ralph Bunch screwed us, right, <laughs> right. with the United right. States. And now you got Linda Thomas Greenfield, you know. So, you know, where's these people at on this? That, you know what? I'm, I'm so glad you made that point. But the, hold up. Stick a pen in that yeah. right there. So uh, I'm glad to see uh, our brother Ron Frazier on because oh, hey, he, he always brings this great historical, uh, these great historical tidbits. He said that Paul Robeson's Freedom newspaper also denounced uh, Ralph Bunch wow. for everything we just said. So thank you, wow. uh, Roan, for for That's uh, our you know he for just, he just came right on in. He just you know <laughs> he just splits on in you know with his and 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 alights on our shoulders and whispers in our ear. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so like a John we and pray you like a John who does does on the other side. Right. You know, brothers and sisters. So all right. So what you just said about you know. Uh, uh, Palestinians looking at the history of who was responsible for their land being stolen mm -hmm. from them and having Ralph Bunch in that lexicon of, of, of you know, I don't know how you would want to characterize right, Ralph Bunch right, because right. there are indications in this article that while Bunch clearly knew that uh, uh, the Palestinians were being treated grossly unfairly, and that's an understatement. Um, he wanted to treat them more equitably, but uh, that later on, uh, it appears that when he went to President Truman, he tried to plead the case for the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. But President Truman uh, didn't really want to do anything about that because uh, it says right here, but personally, Bunch believed that the Palestinian Arabs were the big losers in the conflict because by then, like you said, Israel had taken 78% of the land right, in the war. Right. Uh, and in fact, the agreement sealed the fate of the UN's plan for an independent Palestinian state. The Israelis kept almost all the land they had conquered. Israel had expanded from, uh, you know, the UN allocated 55% on and on and on. Uh Oh, this, I'm sorry. This is where I wanted to, uh, this is where I wanted to, to, uh, to, to point out that, uh, um, Bunch asked President Truman and UN Secretary General, uh, Trig Ve Lee for help to prevent a breakdown in the negotiations. And information that was meant solely for the UN was passed on to the United States by the Secretary General. Lee was strongly sympathetic with the Jewish position and Truman supported the Jewish case because his advisors told him that Jewish votes in the United States were both important for his reelection in 1948 and for the Democratic Party in the future. So both Lee and Truman were biased in favor of Israel. Pressure to compromise was mainly applied to the Egyptian delegation, and the final agreement was more beneficial to Israel than the Arab countries, despite Bunch's efforts to achieve impartiality. In fact, this article says Bunch's diary shows that he was often annoyed with the behavior of the Jewish delegates and had sympathy for the demands of the Egyptian delegation. 
Mm. So I'm uh, going to drop this in here for you too, uh, for you to peruse at your leisure. But here's the question. So I'm hearing a lot of people, especially a lot of black folks, uh, talk about, uh, you know, why should we be, why should we be concerned about what's going on with the Palestinians? Right. Why should we care? Where were they mm-hmm. when we had our struggles? Right. Imagine what you just said. Imagine what you just said. Palestinians looking at the history of the theft of their land, the the, the forced expulsion of their people, the Nakba, and knowing that not only was the United States responsible, but a black man who was a represent well, who was a representative of the United States was involved. What would what would how would we feel if Palestinians were like, well, where were y'all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and then, <laughs> and, and the thing of it is, is that what we, what we, who we failed to include between Bunch and uh, and Linda Thomas Greenfield is Barack Obama. Oh, Barack Obama, Ooh. who was who was a staunch supporter mm-hmm. of Israel, staunch supporter of of, of um, Israeli militarism and stuff. So I mean, so here you got the unholy trinity mm. of the of this black misleadership class. Not to mention the support that Israel receives amongst the black congressional caucus. Yep. Um, uh, black members of Congress. Um, you know, uh, especially in the past. Mm-hmm. And so you know, so yeah, when it comes to the uh, the misleadership political class of black people, they have not been a friend to to the Palestinians. Absolutely. But but do you know why Palestinians don't say that? Palestinians who know this history. Uh, who know their history, mm. which I, we cannot keep saying enough. Yo, thank you, Ricky Ryan. Been our Rustin too, I believe. That's oh, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, we can't. We 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 cannot say enough that we don't know our history enough. We mm. do not know our history well enough. Part of the reason you're not going to hear a whole lot of Palestinians who know their own history say, you know, ask that question that we ask of them: well, Where were they when we were in our right. struggle? is because there has been a long history of black solidarity with Palestinian people. Starting, well, probably not even starting with, but most notably Malcolm X, as I, as I just mentioned with that essay that he wrote. Well, um, before we get into that, because mm-hmm. I know that um, we've become, um, because we've been kind of heavy. Uh-huh. So there's a video I want to show. Oh, okay. Right, right. Um, you know, to give people a chance to catch their breath. Uh, and to do some more housekeeping, because what I'm looking at is 84 people watching, and we ain't even break 60 likes. So <laughs> okay, know. so we're gonna show, we're gonna save this right, for the right, other side of the. Right, okay, right. so hit the likes, uh-huh. subscribe, mm-hmm. join, uh, patron. Y'all know the drill. Uh-huh. We want to show you this video because we feel like this is sort of like a humor, uh, uh, a humorous way of explaining. Well, we've been putting all night about the media, Palestine, and Israel, and stuff like that. Okay, did you send it? Yeah, to I sent it to you. Remember the, 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 the guy oh, is this one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, you know, I know we've been kind of heavy, so we're just going to do this, and then we're going to come back, and then we're going to get heavier. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get let me get it right now. Wait, wait, right. wait. Doggone TikTok video. Yeah, but anyway, um, so, again, do we got it? Yep, I got it. Okay, bet. All right, so then I can shut up. Okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, share audio. Always got to remember to click that tiny little button. <laughs> come back here and find me like a man. If you come near me again, I'm going to break your face. No, no, bro, you keep coming in at the wrong time. He punched me. Breaking news, a Palestinian man incites violence and threatens to kill an innocent Israeli man. Folks, this footage is too disturbing to show, so we won't show it. Yes, finally. Hey, that's my phone. It's mine now. (laughs) Give it back. Um, No. I said, give me the phone. (laughs) No, no, no. It's not what it looks like. He took my phone. This just in, an innocent Israeli man has been assaulted and robbed by a violent Palestinian man. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the victim and his family. 
Headshot. Headshot. I got a headshot. <laughs> What now, huh? They got guns, I got rocks. There's no way you can make me look bad. This just in, Palestinians have received a large shipment of extremely dangerous rocks and pebbles, possibly from Iran. In the meantime, we have tried reaching out to the United Nations for a statement regarding this violence. Unfortunately, they seem to be quite busy as they have yet to respond. That's all right. <laughs> so that's just 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 a little tiny bit of of uh, levity for you. Uh, yes, I'm going to drop this video, this link in here for you to <laughs> yeah. to enjoy whenever you see fit. Because I mean that that really was pretty funny. But that, that's exactly what. But it's, they a, do. but it's so accurate too. It's so accurate, right, and, and, right. and they could they could have used every American news outlet. They might as well have put CNN, MSNBC up in there. I mean, it's just. Yeah, that that is that is exactly how it is. All right, so uh, we got like ten minutes left. So yes, we do. Go? We got ten minutes left. So I just want to show you uh, really quickly why you're not going to see a lot of Palestinians talk about you know where have African American people been in our struggle for liberation? Well, because there's this long history of Black Palestinian solidarity that doesn't stop at Ralph Bunch, uh, thankfully. Like I said, Malcolm X uh, wrote that amazing uh, um, uh, treatise that I sent you the link to, um, uh, really comparing the settler colonialism mm -hmm. in Palestine with the settler colonialism in Africa. It's amazing. But there was also... Uh, <laughs> One of the first workers' organizations to take up the cause of Palestinian liberation was the League of Revolutionary Black Workers in Detroit. Mm. Black and Arab auto workers there jointly participated in wildcat strikes and the group solidarity with Palestine became a point of struggle with the city's ruling class. There were Black Freedom Movement uh, um, uh, solidarity from the civil rights and, uh, movement to uh, legal uh, equality to national liberation. Uh, the Student Nonviolent Coordin Coordinating Committee broke from its own official liberalism and declared solidarity with Palestine in the Arab War uh, 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 in the Arab-Israeli War of 1967. The Black Panther Party was a supporter of the Palestinian struggle. Huey Newton wrote an article called On the Middle East, where he said, we support the Palestinians. Just struggle for liberation 100%. We will go on doing this, and we would like for all of the progressive people of the world to join our ranks in order to make a world in which all people can live. Uh, let's see, in 1970, an appeal was published in the New York Times entitled An Appeal by Black Americans Against United States Support of the Zionist government of Israel. This was issued by the Committee of Black Americans for Truth in the Middle East and signed by prominent black revolutionary leaders, including James Boggs and Robert F. Williams. So this, this thing that we keep seeing people saying, our people saying about how, you know, we don't have anything to do with Palestine, um, all of our ancestors, mm -hmm. all of them, all of our revolutionary radical ancestors who 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 is worth who are all worth referencing mm -hmm. they beg to differ so yeah so i mean this is, i mean what you just put is is and you know when folks say well where were you know where was this person where was that person and it's just such a, a historical view oh, God, of so what, what history is because you know it's like um you know the, the struggle of oppressed people um, goes back a couple of hundred years, right? So it's like, you know, so to sit up here because you haven't seen it, and this is the reason why we're bringing up the fact about the media biases, because you're not going to hear it. Mm -hmm. I remember um, uh, a famous um, uh, exchange between George Galloway and a Fox, Sky Fox News lady. I mean, I mean, it goes back some time, but this was one during the time when the Israeli military um, uh, Navy had killed um, uh, Shell the Beach of Palestinian mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. and killed the entire family that was just on the beach for for holiday as they call it, and um and it was during the time of like two uh, uh um 
apparently um, Hamas uh, uh, kidnapped two, they, you know, allegedly kidnapped two Israeli soldiers or some. And and the, and the Sky Fox News lady, many, a lot of you probably um, uh, remember uh, um, this this exchange. But she kept on going on about the the soldier mm -hmm. and named his name, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and said, yeah, but what about? And George Galloway said, he said, you know, he said. You had seven people, Palestinian people, a whole family that were murdered on the beach, and you don't know none of their names. <laughs> yep. But you know the name of every Israeli soldier mm -hmm. that so that that you know that supposed to have been kidnapped, which was like two or three of them. Right. So you know, so right in that exchange, you see the media blackout and um, the fact that let's 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 look about when we were down there for the Palestinian. Um, uh, um, protests that mm -hmm. you and I attended. Mm -hmm. CNN wasn't there. They were not you know, there. It wasn't no mainstream media there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it is this orchestrated effort on the uh, part of uh, mainstream media to make sure that the Palestinian uh, cause doesn't get any traction. Um, yep. uh, uh, it was the reason why Israel blew up, is Israel um, blew up, and uh, um, the the building in Gaza that was used by Al Jazeera mm -hmm. and, um, and and the AP, which um, again uh, that Dr. Jerry Ball stated, and I agree, is that you don't even hear the outcry from um, from the other media outlets around the world about that. Nope. You know that still you know is is not the, the the amount of outrage. Had that would have happened in Venezuela or mm -hmm. or North Korea or somewhere Iran or something <laughs> like that. Um, uh, then you know, of course, you would have heard the outrage. You don't even hear the outrage about Israeli involvement in the in the murder. Forget assassination; that's too clean. The murder uh -huh. of Iranian nuclear scientists, uh -huh. which is which, which would be considered an act of war, or, and you know, uh, any other nation would consider an act of war. So, um, yeah. So you know, a lot of times we need to stop thinking that all of these events just happened four years ago when we started <laughs> talking about you know where where has anybody been. Right. Um, well, you know, no, where have you been? <laughs> that should be the question. That is absolutely the question. So we're going to leave you with uh, a few things, uh, three things, actually, other than all of the homework we just gave y'all to read. Um, there's y'all are also uh, uh, chatting about uh, the Gray Zones panel discussion uh, on their uh, YouTube page with Roger Waters of Pink Floyd, right, who is a right, right. uh, very prominent uh, he's clear about his anti-Zionism and he don't even care. He's just like, whatever, <laughs> you know, I have this big platform, of all these fans, and I'm going to tell all those people why Israel is, an, is a Zionist apartheid state. And I don't care what you think about it. But see, so, one of the things we have to be clear, because I don't want the, my nation to be um, a muddled, muddling the message either. There is a Zionism that is legit. Mm. And so when we talk about Natari, um, 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 I, I hope I'm pronouncing their name. But like religious groups, like Jewish religious um, um, uh, groups, like Natari, uh, mm -hmm. y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, but you know, but you have um, uh, Messianic Jews who are right. against the political um, Zionism of of what Israel is. It's a creation of political settler colonial Zionism, mm -hmm. where you have a, 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 a secular Orthodox Jews who are not um, who, according to their own religion, is is false. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a false creation. Um, you know, so um, so I don't want to just say Zionism as a blanket statement. There a is a form of Zionism that is um, um, a, a based on um, certain um, concepts of Judaism that is legit. That is um, uh, that that is um, devoid of these settler colonialist um, um, constructs. So you know, so but but what what we are what is against is the Zionism of um, of the the European settler colonialist um zionism that we see being manifested in what you know in this false state of israel mm -hmm. so that's the one thing please check out the gray zones panel discussion uh uh with roger waters you can find them on youtube gray zone on youtube uh i dropped a link in the chat for you for a documentary called occupation of the american mind it is an excellent excellent uh, a documentary about how Israel controls the narrative about Israel in the United States media. Then there is another documentary. Uh, this is part one of a, a, a an Al Jazeera documentary called uh, The Lobby. Uh, and I think this is uh, part one of it. Uh, 
Oh, actually, no, this is this is the link to all all of them of the I think it's uh, one, two, three. It's three parts um, of this Al Jazeera documentary called The Lobby. And it goes into detail about how um, the government of Israel and the United States uh, controls the narrative about Israel, not just in the United States, but also around the world. And there is a critical piece in this documentary from Al Jazeera called, Jazeera called The Lobby, particularly about how uh, Black Lives Matter was handled when they came out. I know that's a whole nother discussion, but when uh, the Black Lives Matter chapters came out in support of the Palestinian people. So we're going to leave you with those. Right. Uh, those three things, some more uh, uh, homework. Uh, look, this was a whole lot of information. A whole lot of information. <laughs> and there's going to be a part three, not right away, but, you know, because there's still still more to cover. And um, so anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just going to toss the ball back. You're just going to talk. Okay. Yep. Yep. Just. So, you know, look, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you learned some stuff uh, from us tonight. We hope that you uh, share this video with your friends and family, especially people who are so supportive of Israel and never want to hear any criticism of them. Um, just share the truth with them. You can't do anything about what they do with it, but now that you know, you're responsible for doing something with it. So right. And um also, you know, this is this this is the weekend that BPM. <laughs> so a lot so if you missed a lot of the shows this week, um you can catch catch all of the shows um that will be re um replayed mm -hmm. over the weekend. Last Open Intellectual will be up next. That's right. Also um it's my birthday weekend, y'all. There is going to be um no waters of healing this weekend. Um, so, um, but we will, um, catch up with everybody, um, next weekend, God willing, and the creek don't rise. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, and we got Tuesday is the, is the, is the Monday of the remix morning show. That is a and bit we confusing. are, we had just did a month, right? Yeah. So we're, yeah. we did a month of remix morning shows. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, your feedback has been very positive, yeah. very loving yeah. and very, you know, so we're, we're encouraged by that. So again, continue telling everybody about BPM. Mm -hmm. Continue to share, like, and all these other kind of things. Make this the hottest Black Power Media platform on the planet. Oh, well, not just Black Power Media platform. Make the it the hottest media, media platform. Pla media on platform, platform. Period. Sorry, no neck. <laughs> Lord have mercy, bye, y'all. <laughs>